on this gloomy summer day that is quite cool. Um, in fact, I think today's the first day of summer. And um, I'm looking out the windows here and it's cloudy and drizzly and, and uh, the temperature is in the mid 60s and it's midday. Um, hotter weather coming this weekend, but summer hasn't started here. And what we're doing here today is trying to make a, a different kind of wheel leveler for the um, for the camper. I made one in a previous video last year um, that is tiered and it's been working pretty good. Um, but I just wanted to try this one because it looks like a, like a cool item. Now, I could buy one. They're made out of plastic. I think they're pretty rugged, but it's a piece of plastic and they start at like $48, $50 and go up into the 70s for one wheel. Um, and uh, I could buy one, but what fun would that be? So let's try to make one. So we have to have something that has a curve that mimics the radius of the tire. So the tire's here and fits into that cup nicely. And then we need another piece that, these could be about four inches, will fit under it. And part of this has to have some notches so that when this is fitted under here, um, it will kind of lock into place. And the width should be, you know, wide enough sort of for the tire so it doesn't rock and, and, um, and twist and come off. Don't know if we can do this. I've got this short piece of two by 12. And um, the good thing is, is that uh, it'll give me plenty of room to cut that curve, I think. Um, the bad news is, is that one side of it is pretty bad shape. Uh, I don't know what I did on it. It's not paint. I might've put it on something to, to weld on it. What I did was is I took a 60 grit paper on my rotary sand and I sanded the top of it just in case there was any metal filings or anything because against my better judgment, I'm gonna put this through the planer because I like clean squared off stock to work with, particularly if I'm going to be gluing. I have a curve for the bottom of it here. And then I did one here and it didn't look thick enough and it wasn't. I wanted about at least four inches here, which is what the commercial ones are. So I had another curve and this is still on a 15 inch radius. That goes up to here and this is four inches, exactly. So this is the curve that we will do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down and then cut it, 
put them half and half together and then use this curve to cut both of them. I'll be cutting out two pieces of three quarter inch plywood to make it thicker and also to give it some strength. So why am I cutting these in pieces and just put it all together and cut it all at once? A very good reason. That little Craftsman bandsaw that you see over there, um, I purchased when I was 21 years old. So I won't tell you how many years, but it's a long time ago. Um, so I, I take it easy on it. It's not like a, a new bandsaw and it's not like a larger one. It's not a huge bandsaw. So, um, you know, you, you gotta you gotta do things in increments like that. Otherwise it'll just bind or it uh, might break the blade. And why the multiple thicknesses of wood? A couple of reasons. One, I want it a little wider. I mean, the tires like this, if I have something this narrow, it's gonna fall off the sides of it. <clears throat> and secondly, um, I need strength for this. Now, I don't have a really heavy trailer, but um, you know, the grain is going the right direction and everything, but I could foresee this kind of breaking. So putting those two three quarter inch pieces of plywood inside um, should give it a lot more strength. I mean, plywood is really strong because it's made of layers that are cross grained. Um, and I'm gonna have plenty of trimming to do with this because they're, they're really rough cut, but I can put them on the bandsaw again to just to cut off some small edges. I can handle that. And then I've got a really good belt sander. Um, and I got some coarse, coarse belts, so I can smooth it out with that too. That was a sanding marathon on the belt sander. I've got it down 95%, um, but I haven't really glued or put it all together yet. So after it's all done, I think I'll save that for the end uh, because it still might be some, some offset when I do it. Right now, I am going to uh, put together the, um, the chalks that go under it so that when it rolls back, you have to be able to hold it up on the end. This is like a smaller version of what I just made. So what I've done here is I've cut the plywood out, uh, you didn't see it, and I've cut some teeth in it so that the two pieces will lock together good and not slip.
Well, it's not perfect, but it does work. I've got about four inches of height, which is the most that I ever need. And uh, it's up there, and it's not broken. Well, it's not the prettiest thing, but it is pretty functional. Um, it's strong enough. I ran over it, and I actually ran off the back a couple times in trying to get this on before I could figure out how far I could go back. And um, it didn't break. Nothing broke on it. If I had to do this again, which I might, I don't know. I'm still in search of the best leveler for my trail, and I have a couple other ideas. Um, I wouldn't make this type of tooth on it. It's really hard to make them even. What I would do is I'd make some flat, flat notches, probably using the table saw, and uh, they'd come out much more evenly. Um, so everything I make, I consider it to be a prototype unless I make it twice, which I do with a, with a lot of stuff, um, just to see if it works. And uh, this does work, and it works well. Will I use it? I'll probably bring it. Try it out, see how it goes, and uh, we'll go from there to see which camper leveler I think works best for me. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe if you have a mind to. Thanks.